Hello guys and welcome to Still Division 2. Today we're going to be starting the second campaign, Berezina, after previously completing the Orsha campaign. June 26th to July 3rd, 1944. The German front is broken. Soviet mobile forces are racing into Army Group Center's rears to isolate and capture its command and logistical centers. Meanwhile, the Germans are cobbling together whatever forces they can to hold the red tide long enough for powerful reinforcements to arrive. The description for the campaign is as follows. Vitebsk has fallen, and its garrison, an entire army corps, surrounded and destroyed. The same fate awaits in the hours to come, the last defenders of Orsha still fighting. The German front has been smashed, and the Soviet exploitation troops have already been inserted in the breach and are racing towards Minsk. German high command reacted to the crisis as it could, mobilising whatever rear area units it could to act as a breakwater to stem the red tide, protect Minsk and re-establish a defensive line to give survivors from Vitebsk and Orsha a chance to return to friendly lines. You can see the Soviet and German forces listed here. Let's select our side. I'm going to be staying on the Soviet side. I'm going to be completing all of the campaigns with the Soviets first. And then we'll jump over and do the same with the Axis side. But for this campaign, we're going to ramp it up and continue the campaigns on hard difficulty. If some German generals have been able to foresee the impending enemy offensive, all are shocked by the violence of the Soviet assault when it is unleashed on the morning of June 22nd. Artillery, planes, and rocket launchers devastate the German first and support trench lines while the survivors are immediately overwhelmed by Soviet assault troops. In a matter of days, Vitebsk, Orsha, Mogilev, and Babrus, the main strong points of the German defense, fall or are surrounded. The 3rd Panzer Army and 9th Army are pushed back in different directions, leaving the 4th Army between them, surrounded on both sides and in danger of encirclement. By then, Minsk is only defended by a string of security troops hastily cobbled together and thrown against the Soviet tanks. While the mighty 5th Panzer Division is dispatched in a hurry and piecemeal to stem the Red Tide. Orsha is about to fall. Army Group Center's front is broken, and what remains of the 4th Army is in full retreat. No major German unit now stands in the way of the Red Army's march toward Minsk and Molodekno. This railroad link is vital to the Wehrmacht. It is the Army Group's lifeline. Cutting it is one of the major Soviet objectives. The Berezina River is the last natural obstacle the Germans can use to slow down the Red Army, especially the bridges near Borisov. The 5th Panzer Division has been dispatched as reinforcements, but its lead elements are arriving piecemeal in Minsk. Meanwhile, the river is only defended by a weak screen of security troops. Your objectives are twofold, to capture Minsk and the major train station at Molodekno on July 2nd at the latest. Stavka also expects you to capture Borisov before July 1st in order to allow our troops to the south to trap and capture the remains of the German 4th Army. Soviet troops storm Orsha. The German garrison is living its last hours. Capture both Minsk and Molodekno on July 2nd at the latest. Here we are in the Berezina campaign, and it's a big map, that's for sure. Got a long way to go. Got to go to Borisov, capture this town, then move on to Minsk. Now we've also got to take Molodegno, which is where all of the train lines come together, as well as Bogomol. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but either way, that has a capture flag over it, so I guess we're going to be heading in that direction as well. Let's go through some of our units. So on the bottom side here, we have the 10th Guards Motorized Battalion, that's some recon, some Valentines in there. Valentine 9s, actually, they're pretty good. For a recon... That's pretty nice to have, although they don't really have much infantry to back that up that can affect the front line. Uh, Dosor and uh, Resvetka are both recon. 
Uh, there is a guards tank brigade of some Lenly Shermans. I think this is the same. Yep, two of those. We've got the 62nd Motorized Rifle Battalion. This has Mot Adomatiki. Interesting. These guys have machine guns. Not that that's really very useful because they'll just reveal themselves at range and get killed. But yeah, otherwise, interesting. Uh, Gvardia. Similar as Vedka. Nice. This is, a, this is a good composition in some of these. Uh, that looks pretty much the same. What about these ones? These three are all part of the same brigade. Yeah, all four of those come in together. And these are the different battalions, which have mostly Gavardia and Saperi. All right, cool. And they also come with the support group with AT guns and mortars. So yeah, really nice compositions. There's also some SU-85s in here, I think. Yeah, SU-85s. Right, further up we see the 25th Tank Brigade that has a bunch of T-34, 85, 1943s. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And we've got another one here. Although the battalions are done quite a, uh, quite a bit differently, you get a lot of them. That is like well over 50. Wow. And this is 60 T-34s right here. That's a lot of T-34-85s. <laughs> Incredible. All right, this is a recon similar to the one in the south, except from we get T-34s instead of Valentines, which I, I like a lot more. We also get some Lendys M10s. Uh, there are the Strelki and the Motrhavtomachiki. All right, cool. Further up, looks like it's Valentines for days. We actually have a recon squadron with Valentines and the T-70 Resvitka. Then we have a bunch of T-34s and Valentine 9s. There is the 176th Artillery Mortar Regiment, which has lots of 120mm mortars by the looks of things, and some F-22s. Uh, behind those, Perry Kazaki. Okay, cool. Some interesting units here we haven't seen yet in the single player. Get quite a lot of those. Those are both the same as well. Uh, further up, we see the motorized battalion these guys have just motorcycles for the most part as well as a few recon valentine threes <laughs> this is a very weak recon we're gonna have to keep that out of combat um then there is a small tank regiment here with the valentines and the lendley shermans there's another brigade this one has gavardia and it looks like all of those are the same and then there's a support group here with the 120mm mortars and some 82mm mortars, all that good stuff. Alright, over on the side of the Axis, what we can see so far, these are LVF Grenadiers and some MG34s. There's some mortars there, the Pack 36s uh, This looks pretty much the same. Uh, this one is Grenadiers. Lots of MGs. This is going to be annoying to play against with infantry, <laughs> all those MGs everywhere. And up here we have Sigerungs. Okay, cool. That's all we can see so far. I guess we should start by probably moving our recon to see what's up. Uh, should we go up or down? Up or down? We could probably try and sneak through the gaps for the most part. We can maintain three points if we go up here. And I don't think we're in range to be attacked. And if we are, we'd still be available to do so in phase A. That's fine. We've revealed actually some tigers. Well, it's accompanied by lots of Schumer, which is fine. But that is five Tiger E's at two star veterans. See, that's pretty scary, especially for our poor <laughs> our poor Shermans here. They're going to be getting popped. I'm probably not going to move into range to be attacked here. We're just going to move up slightly, not too close to the enemy and uh, wait for our reinforcements. These can come up nice and close. Then we'll make the big push through. I am likely to just have to fight the Tigers at close range in the end. I will have to try and find positions for our, our Shermans in that regard. 
I am tempted to have one of these actually go up here and just kind of entrench on this road to prevent ourselves getting encircled. Alright, what about these guys? Uh, let's try and circumnavigate this second security regiment with these recon. Um, let's go up here. It's fine. We did spot, what's this, the second battalion of the 44th security regiment. They have Sidorings. It's just another Sidorings one. Okay. And just going to sneak up like this. We're just going to tuck in between them. Just stay out of range again. So they can't initiate battle without moving. And do I have these guys come down as well? They only have two AT guns. We could just drive down here. And I don't really care if they get attacked. Because <laughs> they're going to lose if they attack them. I'm happy to do that. I'll bring the motorized rifle battalion off road, I think, and keep them away. I think I'm just going to surround these guys. There's no point. We've got these guys right up here. We could probably just drive across, right? Yeah, we could drive across and just surround them. Uh, so, if we're not committing to the center, we may as well just send these up to the top. Actually, let's leave this one here to entrench. Just so they can't go up that road. And then we'll send the M10s and the 32nd Tank Brigade all the way up to the top side to assist these lot. Because we've only got Shermans and Valentines up here. And then this one can come down to the motorway and maybe help surround these guys or something. I don't know. We will see. Uh, we still have a couple more recon to move here. Uh, let's just uh, carry on up the road. Oh, hello. That is uh, the 1st Battalion of the 17th SS Police Regiment. SS Shupo, some anti-tank rifles. Well, they would be pretty easy to deal with. And we could already surrender them, though. Well, not surrender, but surround them. Uh, yeah, our recons could, like, meet up to surround them. Interesting. Not sure if it's really worth doing. I'm tempted to just kind of bypass them with the recon and see what else is up. Uh, let's continue up the road. I am going to bring these guys down. Uh, we can have them just camp next to this police regiment because, I mean, if they want to attack those Shermans and, and Valentines, they can be my guest. I'm not going to have these two guys too close, though. I might try and sneak them across there to this top road. Yeah, that's fine. Just bring these guys down. Lovely. Alright, should we go for this surround? We probably should. Just to get rid of them. There's nothing here, though. We could just carry on. I mean, it's not really going to affect us. <laughs> Is there nothing here? Nope. Alright, well. I guess we're going to push through there. I'm tempted to bring some troops down through this area. But without the recon, that could be a bit risky. Uh, but, yeah, getting this sur surround on this slot is very possible if we send some regiments downward. And we do have the tanks backing us up. So maybe I send the tank regiment down. Oh, there is a... Another police regiment. This is SS Schuper. Okay, that's fine. I will send a unit of infantry with those. And I guess I'll send the mortar regiment as well. And then we'll have these two 86th Cav just drive through with the recon. And then these tanks can just come up the rear and follow them through. I think that's all of our movement, other than reinforcements. We haven't looked at reinforcements yet. This is something that I failed to do really at the start of the Orsha campaign, so I missed out on the IL-2s for a while. And uh, There is the 134th Guards Bomber Regiment uh, that we could buy in and uh, have available in the end turn. That wouldn't be too bad. Quite nice. Or we could rely on the fighters. 
This is the Normandy Regiment, which is the French pilots in the Soviet aircraft. Very cool. Following those, we can get some more bombers. I assume that's the same. It's just more PE-2s. Yep. And then there's a 74th Guards Assault Regiment, which is IL-2s. Uh, following that, the 900th Fighter Regiment. Sword LA 5s. Uh, then we have the 9th Guards. I believe this is the Cobras from the last one. Yep. Uh, the 135th Guards Bomber Regiment, which is, again, more PE-2s. We're going to have a lot of bombers. Wow. Well, there's also some rocket ones as well. That's cool. And uh, the 135th, which is just a bunch of Yak-9s. All right, let's have a look at the 3rd Guards Tank Corps. We can get the 19th Guards Tank Brigade. That gives us more Shermans. We can get some SU-76s. Uh, there is the 3rd Guards Tank Corps. This gives you a lot of Andrushas. And a lot of mortars. There's also the 35th Guards Individual Heavy Tank Regiment, which does have IS-2 1943s, but it costs 60 points to bring in. That's pretty rough. 29th Tank Corps. Ooh, that's a lovely amount of T-34 85s. That's tempting. Maybe we do that instead of the bombers. Another 60 point 5th Guards Cavalry Division card. This just brings in lots and lots of Valentines though, so that's not really too nice. Yeah, these could definitely be better. Alright, and uh, maybe later down the line, 3rd Guards Mechanized Corps? Uh, since they're kind of like blanked out on the end there. But either way, um, I'm tempted to bring in this one. Uh, where could we bring them in? They'd have to come in up here. Mm, I think I'm going to go for bombers for now. Let's go for bombers. If they could have come in at the bottom, that would have been fine. Because I'm going to end up surrounding the center. And then from there, we can just bring in reinforcements further up. Uh, this is... What are these? We've got some Panzer 35s. Uh, pack 36s. Alright, nothing too scary. Let's end the turn, see what the AI gets up to. Now, the AI is quite aggressive on hard difficulty, so I expect them to attack me in one way or another. It looks like they're trying to surround us somewhat. Oh dear. No bombers available? <laughs> I hope so, because uh, this is going to be pretty rough. Well, <laughs> wish me luck, guys. <laughs> we'll tactical battle, jump in, see how we get on. It does depend greatly on the map, I suppose. If it's quite got some good choke points, we might be okay. This is a huge map. All right. Now, I did learn from you guys that a lot of the infantry will be up against... Uh, Early security regiments especially won't have access to transports, so we might be able to exploit that at the start of the game in this one. I don't know if the units we're up against have transports. Uh, at least we do have some T-34s though. Uh, this is an infantry. Yeah, we're up against infantry, so surely we could just wreck them with the T-34s. If I just spread out some T-34s. Surely we can just drive through them. Well, I'll do that from the start. We'll bring in a bunch of T-34s and just kind of probe the front line. They do, of course, have some AT, I think, so we might have to just keep an eye out for that. But otherwise, you know, more, more or less half the map's not going to be covered. So I think that's how we do this. I could also bring in the BA-10Ms uh, to kind of assist... Uh, they are quite expensive, though. They're like three points apiece. I think I'd rather just have some some infantry. Uh, we only have the Ognamachiki. They only cost one point each. That's fine. All right. So the way I'm going to do it then is uh, we will just kind of have these move up, but not like unload straight away. And then I can move them further up if we see holes in the line.
Now I'll move the Sapelli to the middle. Because they're going to have to fight over long and short terrain. Okay, and uh, we'll bring in a couple for the left hand side. And we'll just spread them out a little bit. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it for what I want to do. Um, I could probably bring in a BA-10M somewhere. Uh, maybe I could bring one up on top of this hill. That would be a decent place to put it, just so that it has information for a lot of my tanks. And maybe I could also use some command. I'll, I'll actually take the command with the Sabali so we uh, manage to give them a bit more veterancy. All right, let's go. Speed things up. See what happens. See where the front line buckles. All right, they must have transports because uh, they're, they're not letting us push the front line much, if at all. Well, there's going to be some planes. That is what looks like a recon aircraft. Yep. Alright. I'm going to have to slow things down. Uh, these guys are going to have to unload early. Same with these guys. And these guys. I'm probably just going to have them go into those buildings right there. Uh, these ones are fine to move up though. Uh, does this have bombs? It does. Okay, so we're going to have to shoot that down. Come on, PE2. Do me proud. The PE2s are on the board again. <laughs> Love it. Right, already getting some good shots in there. We're currently running 14 to 12. Uh, that is a mortar. Interesting. And that is a dead recon aircraft. There's a lot of units here. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to back up this area with a couple T-34s. That's what we're going to have to do. Oh, these guys might get killed. Okay, good. They didn't. Let's unload these early. And uh, we'll just push into the same bit there. And I'll have these nearby. And then this can come up here, and this one can go down here to just cover that road. That needs to unload before it dies. And same with this one, I guess. Now these Grenadiers, they don't have AT, so we can just drive up to them with the T-34s. And we're going to take out that unit. I'm going to bomb my Ogden Machiki. Really? I can't even see them, man. Not fair. I'm keeping it on half speed at the moment just because I'm having to watch this map and I'm really kind of being careful about AT. Uh, like in this case, I'm just driving straight up to uh, Panzergrenz or Grenz that have uh, Panzerfaust, which is not a good idea. Oh, that's actually a JU-87. Alright. Um, well, my PE is going to be a little bit slow. What's he even going for? Uh, why do I get the feeling that He's going to be just bombing a random area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> We're good. On this side, my tanks managed to get into a really nice position, so that's fantastic. we got tanks up in the open here. Um, I'm probably just going to unload these because it's a bit unsafe for me to just have them in their vehicles. They're going to die like really quickly. Let's right, see if we can get into the open up here. Alright, that pushes us 16 to 10, which is actually really good. We're going to end up shooting down that J87. Uh, there is a bunch of upper blitz on the way. Move this one up onto the hill. Alright. So yeah, I'm just uh, taking this slow just so that we can perfect our micro across the board. And just make sure we don't lose anything unnecessarily. It's very important these initial engagements that we uh, do manage to win when we probably shouldn't 
in reality, but there we go. That one can fall back since it's run out of ammunition. And that's a 50 mil mortar gone. So if that opens up that, yeah, that front line, I can move these forwards, which is good. Now, uh, what are we even being fired at by there? Maybe an IG? Well, we're taking good control of the left-hand side. The center's okay-ish. I need to move this uh, tank forwards a bit more aggressively. These ones can just kind of push through, though, in the mid. Uh, this needs to be spent on a couple more T-34s. Because I think there's going to be infantry coming through here. We saw a lot of stuff earlier. But I think I might actually bring this one to the centre. Because if we can get T-34s onto this ridge, we can shoot all the reinforcements as they come. Right, let's go target that immediately. Is that a machine gun? It is, but it's a dead machine gun now. <laughs> we need recon, really, so that these T-34s can see, like, actually in front of them. Because <laughs> at the moment, they have, like, really crappy range on their uh, like line of sight. Is that bombing us? It doesn't even have bombs, never mind. This one has bombs though, and it's going straight for my T-34. Hopefully we can just get into cover and it will lose target. Yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> Alright, cool. I'm uh, not sure this one's going to be able to shoot it down, but mm, whatever. Maybe I move up to here. Could do that. Then we can shoot across to this reinforcement road. And the MG's on the hill's dead. Uh, J U87's being hit my, by my P2 rear gunners. <laughs> These like side turrets. Or the turret in the bottom, the turret in the top. It just has to like fly past it and then use its rear gunner. That's hilarious. <laughs> pro strats, boys. Pro strats. Let's get in the, the other recon because this is good for just shutting down these uh, annoying aircraft. Is that going to bomb us? No. Okay, never mind. We're good. Bring this one back across so that it's in a better position. Uh, this T-34 probably needs to move out into the open so that that doesn't do damage to us. Uh, hmm. Probably move these over now. We are actually capturing that point. We're 16 to 10. We haven't lost a unit yet, I don't think. I can actually uh, probably strafe some of the reinforcements coming in there. Or actually, better than that. Uh, actually, we could probably hit this open blitz. Let's go for it. It's in our line of sight. If we get it. We're still playing at half speed. Just to make sure we get it done right. Oh, that's unfortunate. We destroyed the Opal Blitz, but didn't actually manage to get the kill onto the unit. Uh, well, uh, probably just going to move this T-34 up a bit more. Uh, maybe I should move this one up to put pressure onto this point, but I'm just a bit concerned about infantry there. Can see the 81mm mortar. Let's probably just try and hit that. Uh, this T-34, does it need to stay in that position? I might move it to the left.
just to assess because there's a lot of infantry here. Wish the mortars were cheaper, otherwise I would have brought them in. I'm actually putting uh, quite a lot of pressure towards this point, which is nice. Maybe if we move a bit further forwards, we can capture that. That would put us to uh, 17 to 10, which is really good. Another two units of infantry continuing to try and push this T-34. And it just sit there and mow him down. All these units. Uh, I would run them down, but I am concerned that if I try to do that and I'm not paying attention, then we might end up taking a Panzerfaust to the face. I don't have any more recon PE2s to bring in, so I'm going to have to rely now on bombers. Now we do have the frontal machine gun that can actually be fired at the the JU-87 there. It's also going to be the rear guns getting involved. Hopefully we'll get the crit. Did capture that point. We're now 17. 9. Let's bring in a BA-10M for this left side so the T-43 can... 34, sorry, can uh, secure that objective. I should probably bring one in over here as well. We'll have this one go take out that one. <laughs> if that's falling back, I'm probably going to fall back my recon as well. Just because I need to reload those ASAP. Right, we're probably going to take back this point. That will take us to 19. Oh, that's a recon, J87. These are pretty strong. Like, especially frontally. Actually, no, never mind. This one doesn't have the 20mm cannons, so... Never, that, yeah, they're not very good. Alright, so we can definitely put pressure onto these points now. If we get the recon into position, which is on its way, uh, then things should be a lot better. And we're just going to go back to normal speed. Everything all of a sudden seems really fast. But it uh, should be fine. Can't let them get within 120 meters, otherwise we're dead. Simple as that. But should be fine, yeah. I was going to say. I captured that point. It's now 20 to 6. That's major defeat for them. My BA-10M nearly in position. Uh, this point has briefly been taken under our control, which is good. I think it's this point, right? Let's just push towards that. I've got the T-34 that should be able to help us defend that tree line. Let's bring our BA-10M over here. I'll bring one over here as well. And maybe one here as well. Because there's something trying to put influence onto this flag, which could screw us if we're trying to go for the major defeat. We're going to end up running out of uh, ammunition, though, on these tanks. Uh, do I have any supply? I do. I might actually bring up some supply just to resupply this T-34, because he's actually run out of uh, machine gun ammunition. And the T-34Es are really nice, because they have two machine guns, which is why they can kill this infantry really quick. But, uh, obviously, without machine gun ammunition, that's not the case, so... Uh, do we have line of sight? We do not. Let's just move up a little bit here. Bit risky, but I want to get line of sight onto those guys just to assist. There we go. And that one should be able to shoot down the JU-87. Uh, BA-10M, once it gets on top of this hill, uh, should be able to reveal the infantry that they're hiding there. Definitely is at the moment. I guess we could uh, strafe the Grenadiers. Maybe we could do that. 
I might try and run these Ognemachiki over to this compound just so that we secure that objective. Uh, this is surprising, actually, that the BA-10M hasn't spotted anything. Alright, well, let's just uh, drive up a bit here, then. Across the board, we're doing okay. Three minutes and 34 seconds left. Right, where is this infantry squad? There they are. Okay. You can just see how bad the optics of tanks is when you bring in something like a BA-10M. Oh, that actually might be in the PE-2s flying overhead, so maybe we just have them do circles. I mean, the BA-10M still doing absolutely crap. This does also have two machine guns. Well, those grenadiers taking a beating. Right, now we're going to push up. If we can push a total defeat, that would be absolutely disastrous for them. Uh, we are being mortared here. Let's just move up a bit. Hmm. <laughs> Probably need to uh, <laughs> give the supply here. <laughs> Scared to move out in the open. That's 21 to 5. I don't know if we can get total defeat. We've captured all the ones on this side except this one. Maybe if I move the BA-10M up we can maybe squeeze that a bit more. But on this right side, definitely not going into that town. <laughs> I mean this BA-10M is already risking it being on the edge of that because there could be infantry running through here right now. Yep. Alright, uh, P2s, please uh, crush the JU-87. And those are the units we need to kill, actually, probably to close this salient. Oh no, we lost our supply vehicle. <laughs> I knew moving it forwards was a bad idea. <laughs> we almost did this entire battle without taking a single, a single loss. And I lost the uh, the blooming supply vehicle just trying to get the MGs back online. That is so greedy. Uh, it's major defeat. Uh, Twenty five seconds. Uh, we can just speed it up, I think. Although saying that. I don't know if we're going to get to it, but we can try and shoot down that JU-87. Nope. Alright, not bad. Not bad. Major victory. It really wasn't 12 minutes because I had it on half speed for a lot of that, but 68 kills, one loss. Just that uh, poor supply truck. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we damaged uh, the crap out of that air. And uh, that is already a routed unit. Perfect. Alright, 5th Panzers arrive. Fifth Guards Cavalry Division. That's this one. Alright, that's worth 60 points. Oh, we can actually already bring them in on this point. Alright, okay. Interesting. If I drive through here, can I just surround them already? I'm curious as to how far we can actually go here. Like, this is fine. Is there anything in our way? <laughs> nope. Uh, there's this one police regiment here. It's just full of Shupo and uh, AT rifles. I could just like force a fight with the Kazaki, honestly. We'd probably win. Most of these will be coming in without transports, I think. They've only got... Oh, that's, that's supply trucks. 
Um, is there a way to actually see what vehicles units come in? Ah, oh, yeah, underneath. Uh, so in this case, their AT rifles come in Kubals, but the rest of their infantry doesn't come in much. Are the Alfkrader and uh, the Commandant? But yeah. So yeah, we could force that quite hard and just uh, and just win. Uh, we can bait like the attack onto the the uh, cavalry regiments here. Uh, and then just continue through in the meantime with the recon. There's another police battalion here. That one actually has some Panzer 7 TPs. Alright, well, these are very dangerous salients, I can tell you that much. Uh, but this one, I think we can have these go up here. That's fine. They've used up all their action points. They actually can't attack us. So we may as well just zoom up here. Cool. Uh, this one moved up, but we've got these guys coming across. So I'm not too concerned. Although saying that, they might be able to link this territory and that would surround us. So that's kind of awkward. Uh, maybe we move these down just in case. There's nothing up here, so <laughs> yeah, I may as well just uh, have the tanks come down this road, more direct route. Uh, this one in the center, we could just destroy them quite easily. I don't know what to do about these tigers. We've got to figure out a way to get around them, I think. I could maybe use the recon to just breach through the center towards this artillery. Maybe we just run down the artillery with the recon. Like if we get close enough. Yeah, I think we're just going to breach through the middle. Oh, what's this? The police panzer, I don't even know what that word means, but uh, either way, it's a lot of reserve stuff. <laughs> Look at this, captured Valentines, SPW 204s, uh, there's some VK-18s, glorious, glorious stuff. Alright, well, they're not going to be able to attack this uh, regiment anyway because they don't have any movement points. Uh, let's just maybe have these ones move forwards a little bit. Not too far. Uh, these ones can come down. I think we uh, potentially just attack this with the recon. Uh, there isn't anything else that can join in phase A, is there? No. So, they're gone. That's going to surround that unit. Uh, once we move them. I can't move my units because <laughs> I, I made them route. Uh, so I am probably going to leave it here. Um, we will, in the next episode, continue our very fast push on the top side. We'll try and find a way to circumnavigate the Tigers. And we'll also try and close like a pocket in the center. I think that's what we're going to try and do throughout this campaign. Yeah, I'm going to save it here. I'll then be able to reload it and then actually move my troops. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.